Hello friends, here's my matcha, it's almost done and I'm sitting here so that I can catch y'all up a bit on my life, what's been going on. So I moved back home for a couple of weeks and I guess I wanted to talk about how I've been dealing with things because that for example wasn't, un wasn't planned and maybe not the most ideal situation but truly I've just been I just wanted to make the best out of all of this uncertainty and recognize that the choices I have of you know deciding where I want to live and deciding what I do with my time are a privilege and a freedom that I'm grateful to have but I also recognize that it is scary and it does feel disorienting and like I'm just this little person in a huge universe and I'm just like, what? what is the meaning of life? What am I supposed to be doing here? Um, you know, feeling a little lost, but also I've been quite okay. And... I realized like, you know what, I've been doing pretty good. And I know that so many people, and I think throughout life will always have moments of like confusion and having changes where we just need to deal with um, not knowing what's going on. And so I thought maybe this would be helpful to hear because I feel like there are definitely things that work for me like reminding myself of these things just makes me feel like yes i've got this because you know what is certain that there will always be things that are uncertain <laughs> so let's hop right in This lesson I've been learning for a very long time and each time I'm like, oh, I know you, but you look different. And I get to understand it in different ways throughout time. But this one time I was at the therapist and I was just sort of talking about my current crisis at the time. They said, yeah, but if you keep living in the future and being afraid of the future, how are you going to enjoy the moment now? How are you going to enjoy your life now? And at the time I was like, um, sorry, queen, there's literally nothing to enjoy right now. That is not my intention. That is not my main goal. I literally feel like I'm dying. Um, so obviously it sounds so, it sounds too simple for the complexities of life. But especially, I would say, when we find ourselves in moments of not feeling quite satisfied, feeling like we're not quite there yet, I think that's when we dwell on what is not too much, where it really does take away from the moment. But just thinking back on the times where I sort of had to move back home um, and just felt like really unhappy with my situation I just know that I would be thinking about like oh I wish I was there finally and that feeling of oh I wish this was over oh I just want to fast forward time I still do that sometimes and for me personally that's not how I want to operate at this moment of my life because I recognize objectively there's so much good and I just want to hone this capacity to be present and to throughout my journey whatever my situation is or my environment and my circumstances to be able to take a step back if you can learn to continually accept where you're at whether it is seemingly positive or seemingly 
negative or harder down the road, that ability is going to help you also accept good things. And as someone who sort of has this programming of needing to deserve good things or having to work hard for good things, that's something I've been practicing for real because then you are in situations that are amazing and you're like, damn, why do I feel like I don't deserve this? Why do I feel like I can't accept this? And so it actually goes both both ways, accepting good and accepting suffering. It's all connected. Okay. Um, hope you all got something out of that rant about being present. But those are just sort of my connecting points with what I've been learning. I wanted to take a moment to talk about who I'm working with on this video in the theme of journeying throughout life. This brand designs beautiful leather bags inspired by their cultural origins, but also celebrating craftsmanship and timeless beauty. And to me, that is so important when I bring things into my life, especially items that I'm going to be using like bags that they're high quality but also thoughtfully designed and so I'm so excited to share the two cutie bags that I have from them What better collection to talk about than their Sean collection? This bag was actually inspired by the book bags that Wandering Monks would carry. And in that sense, its meaning and its origin goes back to being your friend for a journey. Wearing this, I do feel like it adds a touch of adventure to my expression. Bringing your essentials but also feeling light and I recognize that I didn't have any small bags, actually. So this comes perfect. This is where I keep my journal. Honestly, if I have my journal, I have everything I need, right? I do very much appreciate high quality hardware. This lock is just so satisfying because it is super easy to open and close, but it feels very secure. This is like, I am so excited about this one. This one is just so cute. This is more of my, like, I just need my phone bag going out bag, elegant moment, museum moment bag. And you can see my scarf coming out right here. I love these pockets in the side you can put in your headphones. And this bag was actually inspired by the ears of Drip Coffee. So you can see we have these ears right here. <laughs> it's so cute. And they also have this one in bigger sizes, but I just love the combination of it being so small. If you're looking to invest in a beautiful companion, that is going to carry your things, but also elevate your outfits and be a part of your self-expression. Check out Songmont. I'm going to be linking these in the description box. And it's just such a beautiful brand that I'm very happy to be working with. So go check them out and thank you to them. Back to the video. As an overthinker, I tell myself that there's only so much thinking you can do and you can't figure stuff out just by thinking. And I would like to apply that to projects in life and endeavors and dreams that we have because especially as younger people, perhaps in our 20s and 30s, there's just more pressure to really go after those big things. I guess because it gives us more time, I guess because it sets us up for, you know, more opportunities. But for me personally, this pressure was debilitating and I would just suffer so much 
not being able to go after the things I wanted or to make the things I had ideas for. So all of these ideas were swirling in my head and every day I would be like, oh, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, oh, I wish I could do this. Again, connecting to the first point, like wishing I was in a different situation than I was actually in. That was definitely stopping me, right? It wasn't helping. <laughs> and in the theme of learning that I don't have to suffer so much, like life is supposed to be fun, which we'll talk about soon. But I tell myself now that I don't have to think through something for it to be good before I actually start. And also that I can only be working on one thing at a time. Yes, you can have like multiple things you work on sort of in a period of time, but like actually your focus when you're doing something, you can only do one thing. So simplifying <laughs> this whole drawer in my head makes me feel a lot more calm about life. It makes me feel like, oh, I don't need to do all of those three business ideas at the same time. Perhaps this is also to say, we have time, y'all, we have time. And <clears throat> I'm so inspired also by hearing people talk who are older than me, decades older than me, who start anew, who have the courage to reinvent themselves. That is so inspiring because <laughs> yeah i guess i've also definitely identified with like feeling like it's too late like i've missed my chances like i've failed at my pursuits so girlies we have time we can only be working at one thing at a time so if you're not working on something you don't have to think about it like write it down it's gonna be there but don't think about it perhaps this is focus and you know one helpful thing the other day I was watching a video, I forgot her name, but she's an amazing creator. She was talking about like working out and like the all or nothing mindset and that it's probably, that it probably means like when you have an all or nothing mindset, you do a lot more nothing than actually everything. So it's a lot more sustainable to do a, to have a something or nothing mindset. So have your something. It doesn't have to be everything all at once. It doesn't have to be the perfect journey. But just have your something and focus on that thing. I'm finally tackling repotting some of my plants. It's more been that I haven't had the time to do it yet. And I actually really enjoy doing this, so I'm excited. For me, being in between things, I used to definitely identify with like having plans go differently than expected or maybe not even having the perfect plan like you know like if i had the perfect plan i would have found a place to stay at i wouldn't have had to go home and i was also you know updating one of my friends and they were like you know but you're in between things with all the magic that comes with that and i was like oh my god that is so true to move to another city into my friend's sublet that wouldn't have happened if I had locked myself into the next situation, apartment, opportunity in advance so I've been trying to embrace this as a special little time somewhere else a time to reconnect with living at home and have a better relationship with it um, and sort of recoup This is just one adulting lesson that we all need to learn some way or another. And that is that our well-being is everything. I've definitely been in very unhealthy phases of my life where I felt like, no, if I just like work myself to the ground, it's going to be worth it. I can rejuvenate another time. But then I learned about sustainability not just ecologically, but with our health, with our mental health, and that it's so much more powerful to be able to keep going than to go really hard and burn and not be able to do anything. 
And、um, as someone who has experienced major burnout, as a twenty-two-year-old, which is so sad.、Um, I mean, it made a lot of sense. Like it wasn't surprising, with my personality, with the way my life went, and with my job. But what I do as an adult now is, I ask myself, Have I slept enough? Have I had three meals? Have I taken a shower? Like, am I taking care of my personal hygiene? How is my mental health? Like, am I thinking a lot? Am I dwelling on something? Am I in an anxious cycle with something? Those basic needs. Am I feeling safe? Are the first thing to focus on before I do pretty much anything, and because I prioritize my well being and my stability and my feeling of peace so much, I have felt so much more stable. And I know it sounds so simple, but I admit, like doing these things is hard, like moving, going out, and as an introvert, I do need my alone time. But <laughs> major lesson here: I do fucking have to socialize. I mean, I want to. I know it's good for me, and I do need it. It's just maybe a bit harder for me. So I recognize like how important that is. And you know, this is truly about when I'm not feeling quite well. Instead of thinking that it's some external circumstance, I first ask myself whether I'm taking well care of myself. I also feel like this is a skill, and it's not just about taking baths and doing face masks. This is about honing your peace, knowing your needs, setting your boundaries. And taking enough time for yourself to feel good before you go out into the world. My last point was more about having an inner stability and a well-being to be able to once again be present to make choices consciously. But my next point is about having energy to go out and do things, which does build up on feeling healthy. Because I want to talk about the phases in my life where. I just didn't have any energy or capacity to do anything, and one context of that was that I also didn't like try to have fun. Like one program of mine is that I don't deserve to have fun. I need to earn having fun. Having fun is like a pleasure of the future when I've really deserved it. So I've been trying to rewrite that for myself, right? And when I got better mentally, and started realizing that I should have fun <laughs> to level up my life and to feel happier, I recognized like how much I just like kept myself stuck in in action and just stuck at home and just afraid of doing things, and I didn't have energy to do things because I wasn't doing things. So my lesson here is that I learned that I wanted to have energy to go out and do things, and actually going out and doing things did did in turn give me energy. If you keep doing these things and are just in touch with, oh, I want to go do this, and you can do that, I think that takes confidence, and I do think it takes <laughs> stability. And I'm just talking about these things because I used to not have those. Like I used to not have the confidence. I used to not have the stability. I used to have way too much anxiety to even like step out of my apartment. And 
I know that others must feel the same. So perhaps this is like a little reminder that like it's so worth it to go out there and take action and I mean we can even translate this to little things like cleaning your room. It feels so good to like create order and once you get into something you create momentum and you're like this is not that hard. <laughs> so the lesson here is that doing things and taking action gives you energy. Wait, wait, wait. And speaking of energy, I want to close this video off with tying back to the fun. Having fun is a superpower. And as we talk about energy, having fun means that we're being present, means that we're actively engaged in what we're doing. Some may say life is not all about pleasure. Well, I think to me it is. I think it's inevitable that there are going to be adversities or difficult situations. So why not try to have as much fun as possible, especially when it gives us energy so the path I've been moving through has been like, okay, if I want to take action, what is fun? Because that action is easier to take first. And then once I'm already doing stuff, it's easier to keep going because I have that momentum and it's giving me energy. Touch back on what I've been saying at the beginning of this video, like, where am I going? What is my purpose in life? I'm probably going to do what feels most fun to me because that's the way I want to live my life. I, I know I can work hard, but I do need to be working on the right things for me to keep going, to get energy from what I'm doing because then I can also do a good job and enjoy it and that's what matters so y'all i really hope that this was valuable thank you so much for being here remember that we do have time and maybe ask yourself like if you feel under pressure where does that pressure come from it's so valid to feel under pressure but if it's coming from yourself Remember, like, there's enough pressures out there in the world. <laughs> so maybe you can be, for yourself, a source of patience, space, and love. And someone who keeps you going and cheers you on. Because life is hard enough. Check out my friends at Songmons. Their products are going to be linked down below. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you around. Until then.